Hello, and welcome to another episode of In Our Community. I'm your host, Joseph Taylor, and with me today, I have Julie Hutchison and Megan Medeiros. How are you guys? Doing good, glad to be here. Very yeah. nice. Thanks Very for having nice. us. Yes, absolutely. So, um, Megan Medeiros joined the committee for Green Foothills as an executive director in November 2013. In her role, she develops and implements the organization's strategic goals and manages its operations. Prior to joining Committee for Green Foothills, she managed the Sierra Club Loma Prieta Chapters conservations programs and fundraising efforts. Megan got her start as an advocate for open space as a teenager when she joined the effort to stop a measure which would have allowed development on steep Fremont hillsides. Macon lives near downtown San Jose with her husband, Mark Anthony, and dog Atticus. <laughs> she enjoys bicycling, hiking, and rock climbing. We also have uh, Julie Hutchinson, and she joined um, the, the Committee for Green Foothills um, as one of the organization's three legislative advocates in 2010. She is particularly, particularly focused in southern Santa Clara County, where development pressure on farmland remains high. Julie is a member of the Santa Clara County Food Systems Alliance and serves on the Morgan Hill 2035 General Plan Advisory Committee, Santa Clara Valley Habitat Agency Public Advisory Committee, and the Santa Clara Valley Water District Safe Cleaning, Clean Water Independent Monitoring Committee Julie also serves on the board of the Santa Clara County League of Conservation Voters, which endorses pro-environmental candidates and ballot me measures. She lives in Morgan Hill with her husband, Tracy, and two boys, Kieran and Connell. It's a pretty full plate. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. It keeps me busy. So, Megan, tell me a little bit about the Committee for Green Foothills. I'd love to. So the Committee for Green Foothills, our mission is to protect open space, natural resources, and farmland in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties through advocacy, education, and grassroots action. To put it more simply, we work to protect some of the most beautiful places in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties. I'm talking about our coast, our forest, farmland, our creeks and streams, the bay, and more, more recently we've been advocating for urban green spaces in our local parks. Nice. So uh, much more than just our green foothills, yes. though that's still very much a part of the work that we do. There are a lot of reasons why we do this, um, and I'd like just to talk about two of them. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I'd go on and on <laughs> for the rest <laughs> of, course, of the show. Of course, of course. So um, one of the biggest reasons is because of kids. Kids need and deserve to have access to nature. As Absolutely. you know, in her introduction, Julie has two boys, and I actually have a girl on a way in, in the few, next few months. Congratulations. Thank you. And we want what any parent wants to, for our kids to have access to and to live and grow up in a beautiful place. Um, you know, most adults today, myself and Julie included, we grew up in a place where we could you know, roam through the hillsides, hike in our forest, uh, you know, splash in a creek, and also just have really inspiring vistas to look upon and remind ourselves that there's something bigger than just us personally, and also just be inspired. And this is something that we believe that everybody deserves and that future generations deserve. And this is basically what the Committee for Green Foothills is all about, is protecting these places so that kids have access to it um, for future, gener you know, just for generations to come. Um, the second reason is because nature ha is, there's, nature is so valuable. It's, Absolutely. you know, yes, it inspires us, but also it provides some really important ecosystem services. Things like cleaning our air, cleaning our water, protecting us from sea level rise, um, protecting us from flooding and erosion. These are very real value, this, this is a very real value that, you know, actually there are some groups that try to put a dollar figure on this. There's a group, the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority that just mm -hmm. in the past year released a study that put uh, basically research, they, they did a lot of research as to 
what is the value of our local open space if you did try to put a dollar value on it not that yeah. we would ever want to because <laughs> it's kind of it's priceless, it's priceless. Yeah. but you know if you were just to look at the ecosystem services um, things that we get for free that nature provides things like cleaning our air cleaning our water it amounts to billions of dollars a year Wow. Um, yeah. So, you know, this is something that for those folks who, you know, it's not enough to, to have those places to go to, to hike in, you know, knowing that we're getting all of these services really for free locally, especially in this time of drought, having Jeez. land to clean our water. Um, so we have locally available water is so important. Um, you know, something that I was really surprised to learn about when I, you know, just got started in the environmental movement and when I joined Committee for Green Foothills is that after World War II, there was this huge pressure to basically pave over so much of our open space. You know, basically um, developers were looking at the way Los Angeles grew and they were hoping to develop the Bay Area in very much the same way. Mm. When I, what I mean by that is there were proposals to basically pave the San Francisco Bay south of the DeMartin Bridge to wow. cut down all of our forest in the Santa Cruz Mountains, put um, highways, major highways, crisscrossing our forest all the way to the coast, and just basically pave over all of that with housing. Our cities on the peninsula in Palo Alto all the way up north would just go right over the hillsides to the coast. Mm -hmm. And you know all of these, you know all the hillsides in southern Santa Clara, southern Santa Clara County, local farmland down there, it was basically planned to be built over, and that is wow. the reason why the people who started the committee for Green Foothills 53 years ago, um, you know, they didn't want to see that happen. They saw a different future for our region. So um, you know, basically, as I said, 53 years ago, a handful of thoughtful, committed people got together. And they started, they started this group committee for Green Foothills, actually in Los Altos Hills, in somebody's living room. I'm ta uh, for those of you that know um, Louis Hogel, Ruth Spangenberg, and author Wallace Stegner, they were among mm -hmm. some of our founders. Wow. And if it works for you, I'd actually really like to show your viewers a video um, that talks a little bit more about our founding and introduces one of our legislative advocates. We have three legislative advocates. One is Julie Hutchinson, and another is Lenny Roberts, um, who you'll see on this video and has been with us for 40 years. Um, so I'm really excited to show that if it works for you. Yes, absolutely. Great. <clears throat> so yes, we do have that clip. Great. After World War II is when the Bay Area really exploded with development. I think that's why in the 60s there, there was such a, I think there was a lot of awareness about, you know, we're losing land that we should be perhaps protecting in the 50s, but in the 60s I think that, that's sort of when the awareness bubbled up to an activism level. born they opened the Caldecott Tunnel. They opened the Golden Gate Bridge the next year. So um, it's, imagine the Bay Area with, without those things. That's not that long ago. was proposing to extend its, the city all the way up to Skyline and all the western hills that was all going to be part of the city of Palo Alto and they were also concerned about early development of Stanford Industrial Park so the Committee for Green Foothills was founded as a reaction to that proposal about 25 people got together and formed the Committee for Green Foothills I wanted to be for something. For the last 50 years, which have been a time of unparalleled growth. That 
that is a very touching video with a very powerful message. Well, so <clears throat> for over 50 years, you've been working on the issues that affect the quality of life in our region, counting among your many successes, the new Tom Lantos tunnel at Devil's Slide. But Committee for Green Foothills isn't resting on its laurels. You've already released a vision for your next 50 years, which I took a look at. It's very nice. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, oh, thank you. Well, as you see, um, it's entitled Deep Roots Green Future. And um, the first part, Deep Roots, refers to our, our history, our longstanding history, our work, um, our ties within the communities of San Mateo and Santa Clara County. The second part, Green Future, refers to that vision that you mentioned. Uh, and it uh, also speaks to the seven distinct uh, natural areas where we focus our work, and Megan mentioned some of them earlier. There's baylands, there's coasts, hillsides and grasslands, forests, farmland, rivers and streams, and urban green spaces. Um, so the Deep Roots Green Future really is, um, some, it's a, it lays out a story of these natural areas in, in the future that we envision for present generations and next generations within the 50 year period. And it also lays out goals that will need to be achieved in order for that vision to be met. And some of these goals will be met in partnership with other organizations. Megan mentioned two of them earlier, or she mentioned Santa Clara County Open Space Authority, but there's also the Mid Peninsula Open Space District. Um, and we really feel that the vision resonates mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. because we've seen that even most recently with the passage of Measure AA with uh, Mid Peninsula and also with Measure Q under Santa Clara County Open Space Authority, people are very invested in the natural environment. So it's very, uh, we think that Green Roots, uh, Deep Roots, uh, Green Future speaks to that. Oh, very nice. <clears throat> and Megan, where do you find funding for your work? That's a great question. Um, so we, our budget is about half a million dollars a year. Um, this covers our six full-time staff and our office in, in Palo Alto, not actually very far from the station. Um, and in addition, you know, a part of that is our three legislative advocates, including Julie, Lenny, and then there's also Alice Kaufman, who are mm -hmm. our voice in the community and the ones who are speaking up for our region's open space. Um, we do get some funding from local corporations and public agencies, but to be totally honest, the vast majority of our funding, like 95 to 100 percent some years, comes from a few thousand families who live in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties who believe in the work that we do and contribute oh. um, very generously annually. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing the commitment of our members and we love them so much because it makes all of the work that we do possible very much in sort of that, the light of that famous Margaret Mead quote, you know, never doubt that a few thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Wow, Indeed, it's yes. the only thing that ever has. You know, this is really a grassroots organization and it's changed a lot in the past 53 years, but you know, we're still very much the same grassroots group of people who are coming together and just believe that our region, um, you know, deserves and to keep its local open space and local nature. Oh, very nice. We're very appreciative to have a, a group like yourselves. Well, I will add just very quickly that, um, you know, if anybody out there is interested in supporting Committee for Green Foothills, we would love to have you join and become a member um, or just go onto our website, www.greenfoothills.org and uh, sign up for our email list to get to know more. Wow. Very nice. Um, so Julie, um, aside from believing in the work that you do, obviously, <laughs> um, what do you think is the main reason people become members of the Committee for Green Foothills? Well, I, I'll actually go back to the first part of that question about our work. I think it's <laughs> important to note that people really understand that nature is always in the process of being saved. And I think the recognition that we have to balance nature with accommodating growth is something that reflects back on the necessity of the Committee for Green Foothills work um, and that makes people feel that it's very worthy to support our cause. Um, but in terms of um, you know our, our successes and our failures, um, 
the one thing that we sort of, a, a truism that we kind of live by is that um, successes are always temporary and failures are unfortunately often permanent. Yes. So yeah, you can see so, how that could work out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I think that's part of the continued support is like they understand this concept very much. Um, we've seen this recently with Coyote Valley in um, South uh, San Jose and the Salt Works um, project mm -hmm. or Salt Works um, in uh, Redwood City. Um, both of those are very high value natural landscapes. They offer a lot. Uh, yet both of them have had massive development projects in the works. With Coyote Valley, um, you're talking about an area that has over 7,000 acres of prime farmland. Um, it houses a very important wildlife corridor, um, and you have um, also, it's one of the last large, well, it is really the last large um, natural groundwater recharge basins uh, in uh, for the northern part of Santa Clara County, which in this age of <laughs> drought and uh, yeah. climate change is, you know, it's just invaluable. It's, yes. So uh, thinking back that San Jose was considering putting uh, up to, 50, you know, housing up to uh, 75,000 people uh, there and planning, you know, about 50,000 jobs in an area that really would have set it apart from the rest of San Jose mm -hmm. just because of the geography of the hillsides. Yes. Uh, we always felt it was not a feasible plan and we didn't, uh, we always felt it was not a plan that, that really used the highest value of the land. Um, so this is, uh, luckily, <laughs> through our, our tireless advocacy, we were really seriously the, the group last standing and, and not giving up. Uh, we were able to, you know, see San Jose shelve that project and just put it aside and sort of turn their eye more toward their, um, their what their urban core is right now. So that that is uh, a success, but we also know that, you know, there are still thoughts about uh, developing Coyote Valley. So that's where the temporariness comes yes. in. And so, like I said, that's something that's that's understood. And for the Salt Works Pond, well, this is, you know, again, another very large development, 12,000 residential units, 1 million square uh, feet of, of um, office space and then additional retail space. But this area is 1,400 acres of um, former wetlands. Mm -hmm. And it also right now just even serves as a resting place for um, migratory waterfowl. So it, and these wetlands can be restored and become part of the Don Edwards Wildlife Refuge. So this is again another area that offers a lot of climate change, sea level rise um, benefits and really doesn't belong uh, under development. So speaking to that, that's why, you know, you've got that major support for our work. Yes. But then on the other side of the equation that you were asking me the other side of your question, I think really what brings people and keeps people at Committee for Green Foothills is the sense of family. We started off small. We are small in terms of our staff. And it's that connection that we have with our members, whether it's meeting them through events or tabling or just helping them out at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know they can pick up the phone. They know they can call us. They can tell us what it is that's bothering them, um, what help they might need on issues. It's longstanding relationships. So I think that that's also part of the other part of the equation. Well, that's very nice. Yeah. I guess you guys definitely support each other. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. <clears throat> And so how can we get involved? Yeah. Is, yes. How, um, can, how can I be a part of this? So there are a lot of ways that somebody could get involved um, with Committee for Green Foothills. One is to come check out one of our events. We actually have a few events coming up. We host about 10 to 20 events each year. Mm -hmm. um, so coming up, we are hosting uh, in partnership with many different organizations, including the City of East Palo Alto, City of East Palo Alto's uh, Earth Day on April 25th. So that's not this Saturday, but next Saturday, of yes. April 25th, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, from 9 to 2 at Cesar Chavez Park. Okay. Um, for those that are watching this video at a later date, um, we're also having a hike uh, at, at Rancho San Antonio on May 30th, 2015, if those of you watching this in future years. <laughs> and then uh, we're having uh, actually a bilingual English-Spanish hike on June 13th, a Saturday. Very so, nice. um, you know, if, if you're watching this and you can't make it to that event or any of these events, but want to come to one of our events, I encourage you to go to our website and check out our calendar, uh, greenfoothills.org. We would love to have you. Um, we also have a nine month uh, civic uh, leaders training. It's called the Community Advocates Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. 
So in addition to our wonderful advocates doing the work that they do out in the community and also working with um, one-on-one -on -one with folks who want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. We also offer this nine-month training program for people who want to understand better, um, you know, how they can be uh, advocates for not only just open space. These we actually really encourage folks who care about a wide variety of issues, from um, no open space and nature to other environmental issues like climate change and fracking to even social justice issues like public health. Um, so it's really a wonderful group of people that go through this program and we cover topics like how to talk to your local elected officials and how to go through the local development process and what is the California Environmental Quality Act and how can I, <laughs> you know, how can I make sense of it to just uh, defining your goals and tactics within a campaign. So uh, we're actually finishing up our second year uh, this May, the class is graduating this May and yes. we're uh, just welcoming new um, Applicants right now, uh, the application period is open. Folks can apply up until July 15th, 2015, and next classes will start in September 2015. So I encourage you to go to our website and check it out. Um, uh, we have, it's a competitive process, but we have about 30 people that will end up accepting, 30 to 35 people. Wow. And then the final way, as I already mentioned, is to go to our website and to become a member. Whether or not you can donate a couple of dollars or a couple hundred dollars, um, anybody uh, can become a member, no matter the donation. Um, and if you're not interested in you know, donating just yet, you could go to our website and just sign up for our email listserv and get emails about what's going on in your community that we're working on that you can get involved with. And also just um, interesting you know, articles about uh, you know, just the work that we're doing. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, just to be yeah. in the know about yeah. uh, the Committee for Green Foothills. Yeah. <clears throat> That's very nice. Um, so what would you say it is like to be an advocate for open space? What? Well, um, it's definitely a job that changes all the time. I think it's a really dynamic job. That's one of the wonderful things about it. You come across so many different people. Um, you work on so many different projects. You're always learning. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to you've got to really be willing to to dig in and do the research. Um, that's one of the you know I really the one of the biggest values at Committee for Green Foothills is is integrity in the work that we do. So it's very important for us when we go advocate on an issue that we are very well informed. Uh, so doing your research, talking to people, whether it be the, the applicant, the developer, staff, depending on you know, where you're at, it's really important that you do your reading and, and you understand all the issues so that you can bring forth the, the, the arguments that will help support um, you know, our position. Um, other than that, uh, there's, there's a lot. Uh, the communications, we have to write a lot, uh, whether it be for technical documents, mm -hmm. um, and then there's of course writing uh, for, you know, uh, in our newsletters, so changing your, you know, wearing different hats about where your audience is at, communicating with, with people in the field. Um, there's also, of course, uh, meeting with your decision makers. Um, having those relationships are so important. Uh, and as you read from uh, <laughs> the bio, there's a lot of committees to sit on. Uh, yes. I mean, there's so much happening. Uh, so that's another thing is, is choosing, you know, what are you going to work on? What is going to be the biggest bang for your buck in, in, in the sense of making sure that the, you're fulfilling the committee's mission and, and we are moving our vision forward, our Deep Roots Green uh, Future uh, vision forward. And something that Julie won't say, but I'll say, is something that I think that is so great about our advocates is they are, the reason why they're so good at what they do is because they often are the most knowledgeable people in the room. Um, and because of our work in building relationships with decision makers and city staff and other governmental staff, you know, often we're turned to and asked upon um, just what we think about the issue um, and what we, you know, just what our opinion is and what we think this, a city or a governmental body should do. Um, so yeah, so Julie is brilliant yep. and well, as are the, the other two <laughs> legislative advocates and we're just so lucky to have them in our community. A lot of people, a lot of our members will say to me, you know, I don't have time to advocate for these issues. I'm just so glad that somebody is speaking for them because these, our na local nature needs to have a voice. Yes, and I think that's true. one of the nice things about our job too is to be able to go out into the field um, and, and meet with the community and, and have a real sense of connection with them and being able to help them out because sometimes uh, we are either just, you know, just giving them advice 
or it's working really um, directly and tightly with them on a particular issue. But those relationships are, are really lovely. And, and the other thing that's great is being able to do site visits. Um, and then there's our events, which are really great because then we get to go out and, and hike. So yes. going out to site visits can be really wonderful because you're getting out into nature. Sometimes it's not so great because you know that somebody wants to develop that and, and, mm -hmm. and maybe that's not a site that we feel uh, should be developed, but um, working with uh, the developers is also part of our job too because there are times where we can find agreement, uh, we can find consensus, we can come to some sort of compromise and that's always rewarding too. And that's really much in sort of the nature of our name, a Committee for Green Foothills. As Lenny said in the video, when we were founded, we really wanted to be for something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're very much, you know, we're, we're not, uh, we tend to see things, um, you know, there are some areas where we're like, no way, no how, you, know, mm -hmm. you really should not be developing on this land. But you know, we do understand that growth is happening in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties, and we're very much in favor of that development happening within uh, city centers. And one of our, sort of our newer efforts, as we already mentioned, is advocating for urban green space. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's not just about keeping nature, you know, sort of outside of cities that we can go to and visit but also making sure that there is, uh, that people within cities have local access to parks and open space. So um, one of our more recent efforts is really pushing for this. So just to tell a quick story, um, you know, actually in the news today, there was talking about the 49er stadium down in mm -hmm. Santa Clara. There's this huge, you know, push to uh, basically build um, uh, soccer fields in the city of Santa Clara, which is very much needed in the city. Um, and I know that I only have a little bit of time, so what I'll just quickly say is that uh, one of the places was this amazing place, uh, this 40-acre site called Ulastak Natural Area. Mm -hmm. And this is an area, it's right next to the Guadalupe Creek. It's a bird and butterfly garden. It has an orchard. It's just, it's amazing. And thousands of volunteer hours have gone into this place. And so when the city looked to it as an easy answer for the soccer field problem, we were there to work with the community who wanted to see it protected and say, no, this isn't the right place. You know, Absolutely. They, the people in the city of Santa Clara needed to have at least a piece of open space, of natural open space to go to and to seek refuge from w without having to, you know, we can't always drive up into the hills um, every night. This is a place <laughs> yes. to go and walk to within, you know, an urban area. People need to have access to parks um, yes, no matter where you live. Absolutely. Wow, that is very nice. Um, everything you do, just, I mean, it's people helping people, yep. helping Earth, <laughs> helping the planet. Um, well, um, that is just about um, all of the time that we have. Well, thank you so much for your yes. time today and asking us onto your show. We really appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for uh, coming and uh, being able to come and talk with me. Great. Um, any, any last words you'd like to add um, before? I'm you know, I, I've already mentioned our website, uh, greenfoothills.org. There's a lot of really interesting things on it. If you want to learn more about our current projects, there's a really great interactive map. So you can explore right. that and just a lot of people will go on our website and be like, wow, there's so much going on. We will so. have to check that out. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much. I am uh, your host, Joseph Taylor, and I hope you have an excellent day in our community.